It had been a snowy day. Katie noticed that when snow falls, it doesn't make a sound. <laughs> Orby discovered that when you walk on snow in your boots, it crunches under your feet. And they both learned that overnight, snow could change the world to white. Yeah. Katie was in a hurry. Today, she was going to be Charisse's special guest at school. Yeah. Charisse had wanted to take Orby too, but her teacher said that Orby would have to come next time because they were only allowed one guest at a time. Uh. Katie was going to be late if she didn't hurry. Orby found her missing red mitten and helped her put on her boots. With hugs and kisses, Katie was out the front door and off to school with Charisse. Orby looked around the house. When Katie was gone, the house seemed empty and a bit lonely. Mom asked Orby if he wanted to help her fold the laundry, but Orby really didn't feel like it. Dad wondered if Orby wanted to help him brush the snow off the car. <laughs> and usually, Orby would have thought either of these things was fun. But today, he didn't. He pulled on his snow clothes and went out the back door. Outside, the day was bright with newly fallen snow. Orby looked around. There was nothing fun to do and no one fun to do anything with. Orby sat there on the steps, feeling very alone. He didn't really like it when Katie went off without him. He had no one to play with and couldn't think of a friend that he'd like to play with more than Katie. As he sat there, Orby didn't notice anything happening in the backyard. But I have to tell you, things were happening. When Dad was finished with the car, he came out to the backyard and sat down beside Orby and asked him if he was okay. Yeah. Orby leaned his little pink head on Dad's arm and, and told him he was lonely. Ah. And that was when the fun began. Dad, who <laughs> was always so silly, he asked Orby how he could be so lonely when so many friends were playing with him in the yard. Orby looked up and scanned the snow. No one was there. Dad asked him again, and Orby burbled that there wasn't anyone in sight. Dad looked again and then admitted that Orby was right. But he explained that he was thinking of friends other than children. Well... Orby had to think about that for a minute. What other friends were there? There was Mrs. Perrette, but she certainly wasn't in the yard. Dad smiled at Orby and told him that he wasn't looking very carefully. Orby looked again, and I have to say that he was getting a little frustrated with Dad. No matter how hard Orby looked, no one was there. Dad tapped the end of Orby's nose and gave him a big smile. He took Orby's hand, and the two of them got off the step and started out into the snowy garden. <coughs> Orby thought that maybe someone was hiding, but Dad said no. Someone was leaving a trail for him to follow. <coughs> At that moment, Orby noticed some funny tracks in the snow. Yeah. Orby stared down at the tracks. They looked like little sticks. Dad asked Orby to think of who could have made those tracks in the snow? Orby looked at the tracks. He knew it wasn't a person. And probably wasn't an elephant. <laughs> and just then, Orby heard a bird chirping from the snowy branch of a tree. He looked at the feet on the bird. And he knew right away that it was a bird that had come to visit him in the backyard. Dad told him he was very clever. Then he told Orby he'd had another visitor in the backyard that day. Yeah. Orby looked at the white snow and noticed another set of footprints. These were a bit different. They had four feet marks all together, and even though the feet were small, Orby noticed that there was a lot of distance between each set of footprints. Yeah. Then he saw a squirrel spiraling up around an old tree, and he told Dad that the visitor had been the squirrel. Dad clapped his hands, and he bowed to Orby. <laughs> and Orby laughed right out loud. And at that moment, I have to tell you, Orby wasn't lonely anymore. Then Dad pointed to a third set of footprints. 
The backyard sure was a busy place when nobody was in it. These ones were a little like the squirrels, but much bigger. And sometimes there were only two prints together instead of four. Orby had no idea who or what could have made those prints. He looked and looked around the yard and saw nothing. Dad pointed to the window at the back of the house. There was no one there. But just as Orby was ready to give up, Chance leapt up and landed on the windowsill. Orby burbled, Chance, and Dad did the silliest little dance to let Orby know he was right and that he was really proud of him. <laughs> and that afternoon, while Katie visited Charisse's school, Orby discovered that he wasn't alone at all and found Bruce the dog's footprints, some mouse tracks, and even a funny people track on the sidewalk. It had two feet and a little hole beside it. Dad told him that these were the tracks of someone walking with a cane. Finally, Katie came back from Charisse's school with a painting she had made especially for Orby. And then she told him of all the things that she had learned in school. Yeah! Orby told her all about the tracks in the snow. Katie wanted to see every one of them, and so in a flash, the two friends swooshed outside to the backyard to see who had visited. Orby told Katie which footprint was whose, and Katie hugged her amazing friend. He knew almost everything in the whole world. <laughs> and Orby laughed. He told her what he did know was that even though he had been a bit lonely for Katie, he discovered that he wasn't really alone in the backyard for even a minute. He also discovered that he loved to be with Katie best. But when he couldn't be, he could still have a great time. And this was a very important discovery. So the next time you feel lonely, Take a look out at all the creatures in nature who are sitting and playing right around you. And I hope you'll remember that even though sometimes you might feel lonely, you're never really alone.